Hello, my name is Jim McVeigh. I'm a prototyping solutions architect at AWS. This video is part of a series of videos about the OPA on AWS solution to provide AWS related functionality in your Backstage developer platform. In this video, I'm going to focus on the developer persona and how a developer can use OPA in their daily activities to rapidly get their job done. Now, as a developer, my primary focus is writing application logic for the applications that run my business. On a daily basis, my responsibilities might include creating new applications, modifying existing source code to create new features or fix bugs, configuring my application, working with data sources, or troubleshooting where I'll review logs or other monitoring related activities. As I deploy my applications to the cloud, there are new considerations around setting up and managing networking, where my application will run, and I need to maintain compliance with my company's security guardrails and set up proper access permissions. These concerns are multiplied as my applications need to be deployed across multiple accounts and regions. The question becomes, how can we scale this activity and allow developers to be productive, efficient, and focus on their strong application development skills to bring value and innovation to the business? In a previous video, we saw how the platform engineering team can scale with the OPA and AWS solution to provide the consistency and guardrails through reusable infrastructure for the AWS cloud. Now, let's take a closer look at how OPA on AWS allows the developer role to focus on their activities. When I log into my Backstage instance, I'm presented with a home page that my company has customized. Here, I have quick access to a few favorited items and quick links but let's get straight to my development tasks for the day. I'm gonna get started on building out a new microservice responsible for user data enrichment and get it deployed to AWS. The templates in this catalog would include some of the most common patterns used within my company. My team's skills and design decisions have pointed us towards building a Node.js application. So I'm gonna select this Node.js web application to get started. I'm gonna fill in some basic form information required to scaffold out this application. I'm gonna call it user data enrichment service. And I'm gonna select developers as the group that owns this application. In the next step, I'm gonna select which environment I wanna deploy this application into. This environment has already been set up by my platform engineering team to ensure that the account, region, networking, security, and other corporate or industry compliance is part of what backs up this environment. All I have to know is that I want to deploy my application to the development environment that's been set up for US AML applications. Next step is to provide the Git repository. And then finally, I'll kick off the actions to scaffold out my application and the infrastructure. This runs pretty quickly as it goes through these steps. It's kicking off the environment and environment provider uh, backend infrastructure code. And I'm now going to switch over to my catalog where I can see my new application that I've created. At this time, there's some bare bones information about my application. I can see an overview of the application. I have access to the Git repository. And I can also see what's going on with my CI CD pipelines. Here we can see the pipeline that's running based on the scaffolding that I just kicked off from the software template. While we're waiting for this pipeline to finish, I can get started with my code right away. Let's copy the git clone command and switch over to a terminal. I'm going to clone the repository. And now we're going to edit some of our source code. And we're going to do something really simple to add a new health endpoint. We're going to do something really simple to return a JSON object telling us uh, the status is up. We're going to query an environment variable to tell us about our AWS environment, and then we'll have a process uptime uh, reported back. We're going to add our change, do our normal development activities, creating a commit, push this. Let's go back to OPA on AWS and check out our status of our pipeline. We can see here that the original pipeline responsible for provisioning infrastructure has succeeded. We see our pending pipeline. This is gonna be for the code change that we just started. But now that we have the core infrastructure, 
I'm going to refresh the entire page because we should now have more data that enriches our view of our application. So what we can see now, if we go back to the overview tab, is I've got more information about the application state to show me whether the application is running, and I can start and stop that application. I want to be able to configure my application, so I've got options to be able to add, remove, modify environment variables. I can see more information about AWS infrastructure resources deployed to support my application. And then I can see up at the top that I've got access to some other capabilities that we're going to go through in a minute. For now, our, we've modified our application to look for a new environment variable. So let's add that to our configuration. Here we're going to say this is a development environment. We're going to save it. What Opal and AWS do behind the scenes is create a new version of our task definition so that when our application starts up and it picks up that latest task definition, our environment configuration will be available for us. Let's go ahead and start the application. We can do this directly from the OPA on AWS interface. We give it just a minute for the application to provision and start up. Now pending. Once our application is in the activating state and then the running state, our application should now be live. So we're going to be able to go directly to the application load balancer endpoint that was created for our application on our behalf. Clicking on this link takes us to the application itself. We created a new V1 health endpoint. Here we can see that we get our health response with our environment variable that we configured into our application showing up for us. Back in OPA for AWS, let's take a look at some of the other activities that we might do as a developer. As a developer, I'm going to be interested in my CI CD configuration so I can view my pipelines my GitLab merge requests, my GitLab issues. As a developer, I'm also responsible for debugging my application. In the App Logs tab, I've got quick access to my application logs, and we don't need to go to the CloudWatch logs view in the AWS console. Because Backstage is designed to be an extensible and customizable platform, the App Logs view could be replaced with Splunk or Datadog or other options if a Backstage plugin has been developed for it. When I'm ready, I can use the Management tab to make additional environments available to my application. Right now, I've deployed to a dev environment, but I may also be ready to deploy to a test environment. Selecting the option to add a new environment would provision the required resources to run my application in that selected environment. That might be a different account or a different region, but that's all defined in advance by the platform engineers. Eventually, my application will also need to pull data from a database. As I build out the application code to support querying a database, I'm going to bind a database to the application. The addition of new environments and binding of resources will be covered in subsequent videos. The last item to highlight is the Audit tab. As a developer, I may be interested to view a history of the activity related to my application. In this view, I can see the action types, timestamps, and owners that have performed certain actions against my application. You can see here, recent history where log streams were retrieved and listing of EC tasks. These are actions that we've actually performed during this demo. That concludes the high level overview of how an application developer can use OPA on AWS to streamline their development and deployment of applications to the AWS cloud. Be sure to watch other videos in this series to learn more about OPA and how it can help you scale your development.